Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Uh, <clears throat> today I'm trying out something different. As you can see, I have the captions turned on at the bottom. So hopefully you can read that a little, or you could, if you're, um, if you can't hear me, or you can't, or, you know, if you just find reading the captions easier, then you could hopefully read this and know what I'm talking about. So today's video is going to be why the Northeast may see lots of snow and blizzards this year. So um, let's just jump into this. However, before we do, consider subscribing to my channel, consider liking the video. I know I always say this <clears throat> at the beginning of every single episode. However, it is something I feel that should be uh, mentioned. Sorry about that. Because if you're an old returning viewer, and not a member yet, then consider subscribing. It helps on my channel. If you like this channel, then that's the best way you could support it. And if you're, uh, this is the first video you're ever watching, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed, and you should really consider subscribing. So let's just move on. Uh, first off, we're going to be looking at the probabilistic ENSO outlook, the ENSO outlook, and you can see an El Nino is favored to form in the next couple of months and continue through the Northern Hemisphere winter 2018-2019, and you can see they updated this. It is now at October 11th, 70 to 75 percent chance. So very high confidence in this, at least that's what the uh, CPC has. I I would be fairly confident also in a definitely an El Nino forming. I wouldn't think a neutral El Nino would be forming at this point. That's just absurd. So at this point, an El Nino is very likely to form and will probably form. However, there is a catch to this because if we look at the... And actually, I'll, so you can see that. I want to just show you this first. You can see October, November, December, November, December, January, December, January, February. You can see all those winter months, they are 60% or above in terms of the El Nino probability. And that leaves um, them to saying, you know, 70 to 75. So we look now at the strength of an El Nino. You can see that this is the, these models... Uh, the majority of the models predict El Nino to develop. However, if you look at these three um, models, the blue one, the green one, and the red one, those that is a statistical average, DUIN average, and a CPC console, or climate prediction, ben, climate prediction center console, or model. And you can see all of them are just below that one degree anomaly um, in terms of that positive, making it an El Nino. But that would be making it weak to moderate El Nino. I mean, I think the record we've ever had was somewhere around a 2.53 mark. That's a considered a very strong El Nino. That's considered a monster. I don't think that's going to happen this year. That's the main point I want to take away. And the other thing I want to take away from this is that uh, this or this uh, this El Nino will be weak to moderate this year. So what that means is something completely different from a regular El Nino. So this is what a weak to moderate El Nino would look like. Um, you can see very a couple of things going on. So first we have two jet streams coming in from the Pacific Ocean. This one splits because of a blocking or a ridging pattern and it ridges way up into Alaska bringing warm air into the southwestern Canada and mild air into, uh, into basically northwestern part of the United States. And then um, we have wetter and cooler conditions, not maybe cooler, but just wetter conditions across the southwest because that subtropical jet is riding right over that area. Sorry, and with that subtropical jet riding over that area, we have, um, we have, uh, we have many storms that could be happening. We have definitely chances for, you know, storms and moisture and the uh, atmospheric river of moisture to open up into California. And then we have this uh, this you know this jet stream, this polar jet stream, dipping down into parts of uh, northeastern United States, and I'll show you in a minute. This is much farther than what I, it would do during a um, typical El Nino pattern, and you can see cold shots. So this cold air would be allowed. This is on average. Sometimes it gets down into you know Ohio, New York, S uh, New York City, New York State, Northern Illinois. However, sometimes it makes it down even further. And with these two merging jet stream branches um, by the East Coast, these could produce major big storms that could produce lots of rain in the south and depending on the coldness of the um the cold shot we could see some snow in the south but mainly snow in the north and these storms actually could occur fairly frequently that's why i do think that this year the northeast will be um that's why i do think the northeast will be cold and snowy and could see several big blizzards this year 
If we look at a regular El Nino pattern, typical pattern, you could see the jet stream is way up to the north, not much colder, getting in at all, warm and dry for much of the northern part of the United States. And that subtropical jet, and you could see that polar jet stream don't merge at all, they don't connect, and a lot of wet and cool conditions for the south, which would <clears throat> bring some snow if it were uh, cold enough, but that it's not that polar air, so this wouldn't even be favorable for snow in the south. If you want snow in the south, you're still hoping to get this pattern. Um, but again, this video focuses on the northeast, so if you live in the northeast, you would not see major uh, snows with, with this pattern. Moving on, I would like to show you a couple of different things. So these are actually anomalies that I've created myself, the composite anomalies from the year 19. 81 to 2002 surface air temperature in Celsius where you see the blue it's below average where you see the red it's ab above average or the yellows the greens it's above average and this is um, November through March 2009-2010 um, I shouldn't have included in this but I just wanted to sh uh, mention one more thing that an El Nino Madokai may be forming and um, instead of because an El Nino Madokai is still considered an El Nino and remember at the beginning they said just a type of El Nino they didn't, I mean, they didn't specify what type of El Nino, so it could be a Modokai, but the chances are greatly diminishing as we speak. They're still, uh, they're still there, but they're diminishing. But in case it were a typical El Nino Modokai year, looks something like this, and I would explain how it forms and why it's called that. But, uh, but it's, um, it's I explain it in every single video, and. It seems like if it's getting repetitive. So during and Mel Dokai, you could see we see cold across the southeast. So this is one scenario that could happen. You know, average around most of the country, across most of the country. And then we see below average conditions across uh, the southeast and the, the northeast in parts of those conditions. So part of those areas, I meant to say, you could see the mid-Atlantic, whether you want to consider that the northeast and east. I think this video should be just titled Northeast and East, which I may need to change the title to. So this is during a typical El Nino pattern, which you could see the northeast or the east is not very favorable with cold conditions. And when, when it's not cold, you, you bet there won't be snow. Even if there's precip, it'll fall mostly as rain. And there just won't be, it won't be favorable for snow. So this is an El Nino. You can see I compiled a bunch of years. And now this is an El, a weak to moderate El Nino. You can see some cold splotches, little splats, splashes of blue along the northeast, which could produce um, some cooler conditions aligned with some precip, could definitely produce some snow. And it's much more favorable than with the greens and yellows. And these are just a couple of years that um, would, you know, that happen and every year is different i think this year could be fairly cold in the northeast not only because of this el nino a week to moderate the madokai and everything of this i do think also or we know that the siberian snowpack at this point is fairly big fairly thick and that would lead to more snow and cold across the eastern and central part of the united states so that's another little cool thing i may need to make a separate video on that um so yeah, that is basically it for today's video. Um, I that's it. Actually, I would like to show you one more thing quickly before we exit out. I'd like to show you this one uh, thing that could actually this one website. It's windy.com, and this is a European model. And I'd like to show you the actual potential for a snowstorm. Um, the, yeah. So next, I think this is for the next in the next five to ten days. Uh, next in the range from uh, about five to ten days, we could be seeing a snowstorm in the northeast. I know people have been talking about this. I decided not to make a video on it yet because I think it's too early yet, too early still. And you could see 20, um, definitely double digit snowfall amounts would occur if this storm would happen. But again, whether it would occur, we don't know, but it is definitely possible. And across the rest of the United States, you could see minimal snowfall other than the mountains. But southeastern Canada definitely is getting pummeled by snow, and so is. Um, southern Alaska. So hopefully you again enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya.